What you need to know about buying a Santa Clarita home, August 21st, 2024. This isn't self-serving, you know, the kind of videos or podcasts. Many are put together, scripted by artificial intelligence, by those large language models like ChatGPT and the other ones. Mine have never been perfect enough to match up to that, but I must admit, typing a few words into ChatGPT after assigning in a role gives me 3,000 words of the most perfect Google-centric text that I can post on my blog. However, it seems that those ways are going to come to a particular point of validity where people are going to be able to figure out that the content being written is not being done by human fingers banging on a keyboard. I think that's probably going to be the places, the place the world's going to be, all this extra verification, different levels where now you're asked if you've used artificial intelligence in the making of things on different platforms. I believe that that's also going to include these agents and those roles that are going to be established by artificial intelligence where they're able to produce all this content. Hopefully, there'll be some kind of a fail-safe where they'll be able to show that an actual human being wrote the content like this particular post and me converting this to a podcast talking about Santa Clarita real estate. Plus, what's interesting besides that is I remember back in 2010, I was blogging about real estate incessantly. And a gentleman made a comment that my blogs made his eyes bleed. And I definitely sure hope he's still reading. What's happening in Santa Clarita? Well, what's real? What is fake? I think that should be the question that arises. And if you're anything like me, you know how important that is when it comes to buying or selling real estate. Besides the phone calls, which, you know, me to you, in-person meetings. And AI hasn't gotten there yet, but eventually you'll probably be able to talk to somebody over the phone and, it's going to sound just like an actual human being. You won't be able to tell the difference. Now, still too early for that, but I wouldn't uh, foresee that being too far in the future. These are good questions to ask. You have these in-person meetings, Zoom training. I do a lot of the Zoom presentations about home buying and home selling. Uh, a small group in nature, if not to the individual or the individual and the other decision makers and the other people that are going to be impacted by a real estate sale or purchase. I get them all together and then we go over all of those items, which is definitely important and can help from uh, help a home buyer not get into trouble. You have the right for your own real estate agent when you're buying a home, and that applies in Santa Clarita Valley or elsewhere. You have that right. You have had that right. Now you might have to actually pay your agent to represent you. Now, knowing this, as we get into the end of August, and that's when all the changes pretty much took place. And now we're going to see how that's going to unfold in September. But people are clever. So be wary when you're seeing that people are doing things online that don't seem to be the norm. Of course, the market is changing, but you as a home buyer, potential home buyer, previous home buyer, current home buyer, whatever you may be, or home seller, definitely make sure that you're understanding how the process works. Now, as far as what's charged, that hasn't changed much except for the fee for the agent you're selecting to represent you as a home buyer. Closing costs are what these things are called, the, the things that go above and beyond the home for sale price. If you see a house for sale and it's priced at $500,000, it's actually $500,000 plus closing costs. Those closing costs that a buyer has to pay can come from a variety, a variety, a variety of sources, and that includes your lender as well. You can have a gift. You could put it on a credit card. There's a lot of different ways to take care of those closing costs. They usually tally up to about 3% of the sales price. To give you an idea if the house for sale was $500,000, do some maybe complicated math. We can do that. Multiplying $500,000 times 3%, we get $15,000. And again, that's typically what closing costs would be on that kind of a purchase. As the house gets more expensive, closing costs get more expensive as well. Why is that? Because they can. I don't know if there's any more work as we get higher, but it seems like the vendors in the real estate world seem to increase their fees as the house prices become more expensive. That's something that you need to weigh out amongst yourselves and 
make your own considerations and determinations based on that. However, I think that will probably be something that's going to be talked about in the future. And I think we're going to see more flat fee commission structures maybe come into play. It's too early to tell, but that's definitely been a discussion I've heard on the line. But of your closing costs, you have the real estate lender's fee. That's going to be about 1% of the purchase price. And whenever in real estate you hear the term 1% or 1 point, a point, point is typically a percent. That's, that's the, the, those two mean the same thing. Points don't make somebody, when you use the word point, that doesn't make somebody want to pull out a calculator and figure out what they're being charged. When you say percentages, yeah, people kind of want to pull out the old calculator, well, get on their mobile device or phone or ask Siri or however they have access to getting more information if their brain's unable to calculate, do the calculation with percentages. So I think some of that industry likes the point term better, but understand point is percent. So your real estate lender, they're going to charge you money to help you get a loan. That's how they make their money. They're going to charge it. And whether it be it a broker, mainline bank, there are fees involved there. If they're telling you that they're going to waive your fee, call the origination fee, look for it to reappear elsewhere on the fees that you're paying in the documents or look for an increase in those fees after you say you can get it done elsewhere for less money. So watch out for those fees. The other one's title insurance. That's typically set on home price, and you're part of escrow. So you have those fees. That's about 3% in a $500,000 purchase. That's going to be about $15,000. That's going to be a little different for those of you that are using a type of loan that doesn't require you impounding certain fees that you have to pay monthly. These are reoccurring fees. Home insurance is a reoccurring fee. The property taxes, that's reoccurring. It continues to occur over time. There are other items that are reoccurring fees, but usually if you're going to have a loan type where you don't have a lot of money down comparative to a 20% down loan, usually they're going to say, you know what, we're going to pay these for you out of your monthly payment. So it's not like you get a better deal on the monthly payment. They're basically taking enough to cover a year's worth of insurance and six months worth of property taxes from you, part of your closing costs. So it's going to increase your number. So instead of 15,000, that could be higher than a $500,000 purchase. That being the case, you want to find out what those numbers look like and see if it makes sense for you to maybe increase your down payment amount to get away from those fees. So you don't have it impounded or taken up front. You get to pay it, you know, at the time that you want to and the way you want to. But some people are very good with the impounding. So their one payment every month is all in. And there's nothing else to really consider besides utilities and those things that haven't been covered in the mortgage. Another consideration. Part of your fees, you have your lender's fee, your title insurance fee, like I said, and you're part of escrow. These are those closing costs. You need to know this because if you are buying residential real estate and this hasn't been talked to you, you haven't heard about this, then these are fees you need to consider unless somebody is being wonderful is going to pay everything for you, which I've never seen. You can get a gift for it. You can put it on a credit card. Sometimes you can finance it into the loan, but it's going to depend on the seller. It's also going to depend on if you're going to finance it into a loan, if the property is going to appraise for that amount. You'll know this as you get more into it, but these are other options. So if you're using a loan type that doesn't require to pay closing costs up front as far as the recurring things, the property taxes, the home insurance, then usually that 3% or that $15,000 is going to be pretty close. If you have a loan type that's going to impound, it's probably going to be a little bit more. Your lender should give you a document that shows what their fees are, as should the other people involved. The real estate agent's probably going to go to escrow to get you that tally sheet and what your charges are. That fee should be reflected on some document that escrow has. So you'll be able to see exactly what you're paying out. The lender might be a little bit more complicated to see, but there should be some kind of a breakdown as to exactly what you're paying dollar for dollar to be able to get that lender services 
and also to close the transaction when time comes. There's going to be a time that you're going to have to bring in these extra monies. And in the future, even now, the extra money could include or the money that needs to be paid, not really extra. The money that needs to be paid could also include your real estate agent's fee. That's definitely something to look at and know because needing to pay that, you got to find out what that amount is. And if, in fact, your real estate agent packs the gear to serve at the level in which they're asking, asking for compensation in your representation. Now, of course, I'm glad that real estate isn't becoming more confusing, but it seems like it is. Then you have the typical other stuff. What are the Melarus taxes? Where are the Melarus properties located? Can they be increased or will they ever end? How much is the homeowners association fee if the property has one? Where can I find homes that don't have any HOA fees? Are there benefits to having an HOA? And can those fees go up? And if so, how much can they increase over time? Just watch out for the small print. Actually, watch out for all the print to make sure all your questions, all of your questions are being answered. And if you are getting an impatient look from your realtor because you are one of those, they think ask too many questions, they may suit you to find another agent, one who better understands you and wants to ensure they retain you as their client. Listen, most know some real estate agent. Most love the agent they select, but some agents no longer pack the gear to serve in real estate. Be prepared to talk to another when you're ready, and thank you for listening and reading my blog. I'm Connor with Honor, over and out.